Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our next uh, example of how we find the centroid of an object that's really composed of three separate objects, a quarter of a cylinder, a rectangular slab, and a triangular slab all joined together. We want to find the centroid of that. Notice the origin is in the far back left corner at the bottom there. And we need to find the x, the y, and the z coordinates of the centroid relative to that origin. The positive x direction is this way, positive y direction this way, positive z direction this way. Let's start off by labeling the three objects. Let's call the rectangular slab object number one, the um, triangular slab object number two, and the quarter cylinder, let's call it object number three. The volume for each, well, notice that the thickness of all of them is R. This is 2R by 2R, so it would be 2R times 2R times R, that would be 4R cubed for the volume of object number one. And notice that this is really half of that, it's 2R by 2R, 1R thick, but it's sliced in the half, it's like triangle, half the base times the height, that would be 2R cubed. And finally, we have the, the quarter cylinder, the radius is R, so the total volume of the cylinder, let's do that, so the total volume would be equal to um, area of the base, which is pi R squared, times the height, the height would be the length of that cylinder would be 2R times 2R, but there's only one quarter of that, so we multiply times one quarter, which means the volume of that would be one half pi R cubed, and that would be the volume that goes here. One half, oop, one half pi R cubed. Notice that the full volume for a full cylinder would be the area of the base, which is pi r squared times 2r for the height, that would be four times as much. So it seems to work out. If we want to add the volumes, we can say this is 6r cubed plus 1 half pi. So 6 plus pi over 2 times r cubed would be the total volume of the entire object. Now we need to find the x-coordinate of each of those three objects. In the x-direction, from there to there, that would be at the halfway point. That would be half of 2r, which is r. Here we have a triangular shape, so the x-coordinate of the centroid for a triangle like that would be one-third the distance from there to the height. That would be one-third of 2r, or 2r over 3. Two-thirds r would be the x-coordinate of the centroid for object number 2. For object number 3, it would be halfway the length of the quarter cylinder. That would also be r. In the y-direction, Notice for the slab here, that would be half the distance from the bottom to the top, that would be one half r. Same for the triangular slab, one half r. But now for this cylinder, it would be r plus the distance from the base to the centroid in that direction. It doesn't matter if you come from this direction or this direction, it would be the same quantity. And for our convenience, we wrote it right here, it would be 4r divided by 3 pi. So that would be r plus 4r divided by 3 pi. Now in the z direction, it would be from the origin this way, it would be halfway from the origin to the 2r, that would be r for the slab. For the triangular piece, it would be 2r plus one third the distance from there to there, that would be uh, 2 thirds r plus 2r, so it would be 2 plus 2 thirds times r, that would be the Z coordinate of the centroid of the triangular slab. Again, it would be the distance 2R from the origin to here, and one third the distance from there to there. One third 2R is two thirds R. And finally, the centroid in the Z direction for the uh, quarter cylinder, it would be 4R over 3 pi. 4R divided by 3 pi. Okay, now that we have all the x and y and z coordinates of the centroids for each individual piece, we now multiply those times the volume to get these values right here. So r times this gives us 4r to the fourth. 1 half times this gives us 2r to the fourth. And r times this gives us 4r to the fourth. Coming down here, we have 2 thirds times this. That would be 4 thirds r to the fourth. Here would be one half times this, that would be r to the fourth. And here that's a little bit more complicated, 2r times this, oh, times this right here. Oh, oh, 
Got to make sure I keep it straight. I'm in the Z direction now, so it'll be two times this. Hmm, let's do this. Two plus two thirds is equal to eight thirds. I'm going to replace this by eight thirds because that makes it a lot easier to work with. So let's make this eight thirds, eight over three R. Multiply two R times eight over three R, or two R cubed times eight over three R, that would be 16 over three R to the fourth. 16 over three R to the fourth. It's a little cleaner that way. Finally, we'll multiply this times this. That would be 1 half pi r to the fourth, 1 half pi r to the fourth. Multiply this times this, hmm, that's a little bit more complicated, so let's do that on the side here. We have 1 half pi r cubed multiplied times r plus 4r over 3 pi, 4r divided by 3 pi. This would be equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth, Plus, notice that the pi's cancel out, and the 2 and the 4 cancel out. That would be um, 2r to the 4th divided by the pass. The pi's are gone. That would be 3, and simply over 3. So that would be the value that goes in here. That would be 1 half pi r to the 4th plus 2r to the 4th over 3. Finally, we need to multiply the z coordinate times the volume, that would be the same as this portion of the y coordinate. So that's, let's see here, that gives us 2r to the fourth, 2r to the fourth divided by three, that would be 1 half pi r cubed multiplied times 4r divided by three pi. Now we're ready to add these together. So we add these together to get this value, add these together to get this value, add these together to get that value. I want to add up this column right here. So I'm adding these up to get this value right here. So it's 4 plus 4 thirds, 4, um, the common denominator of 3, that would be 12 plus 4, that would be 16 thirds plus pi over 2. 16 thirds plus pi over 2 times r to the fourth. Let's quickly check that again. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 6 is 16 over 3 plus a half a pi, all multiplied times r to the fourth. So that's correct. On the next column right here, 2r to the fourth plus one, that's three, that's three r to the fourth plus two thirds. Three times three is nine, plus two is 11 over three, plus pi over two times r to the fourth. Quickly again, two plus one is three, and we add that to two thirds, that's three and two thirds, which is the same as 11 thirds plus a half a pi times r to the fourth. And finally, I'm adding the last column together. That would be four plus 16 thirds plus two thirds. Let's write all over thirds. That's 12 plus 16 is 28 plus two is 30 over thirds. That would be 10 times r to the fourth. A quick check again. 16 plus 2, that's 18 over 3, that's 6 plus 4 is 10. I think we got all that correct now. We're now ready to find the x, the y, and the z coordinates of the centroids. To find the x coordinate, we take that value right there, which is 16 over 3 plus pi over 2 multiplied times r to the fourth divided by the volume, which is 6 plus pi over 2 multiplied times r cubed. At this point, I think I'm ready to grab a calculator. The numerator, we get pi divided by 2, and we add that to 16 divided by 3. We divide that by pi divided by 2 plus 6 equals, that gives me 0 0.912. 0 0.912 is the x-coordinate of the centroid of all three objects put together. Now let's go for the y-coordinate. So we get 11 over 3 plus pi over 2 times r, oh, I forgot my r, didn't I? r to the 4 divided by r cubed is 0.912r. So here we have r to the 4 divided by the volume, which is 6 plus pi over 2 times r cubed. 
And let's use our calculator for that. Again, we take pi divided by 2, add that to 11 divided by 3, plus, uh, let's see here, plus 11 divided by 3, and we divide that by the quantity pi divided by 2 plus 6 equals, and here we get 0 0.692 times r. And finally, for the z direction, we take 10, oh, that's a little bit easier, we have 10 r to the fourth divided by 6 plus pi over 2 times r cubed. So we take 10 divided by the quantity, pi divided by 2 plus 6 equals, and we get 1.321, 1.321 times r. Okay, assuming I did not make any calculation errors, let's see if it makes sense. In the x direction, here we would have 1r, we have 1r, and this would be a little bit less than an r, so I expect something slightly less than an r, so that's in the ballpark. In the y direction, I expect a half r plus a half r plus this portion here would be r plus something. So a half plus a half and then something bigger than one. That makes sense. It's maybe slightly smaller than I expected to, but that's reasonably close. And then in the z direction, I expect uh, about a half r, about an r here, and about three r. So half r plus an r plus 3r, that's about right. So it looks like those are reasonable values unless they made a small calculation error. That should be the x, y, and z coordinates of the centroid of this particular object. And that's how it's done.